Yeah. Uh, Spooky new. All right. Okay. Rivets. What are these? Rivets. These are, we actually, you sent them to me, I think. And you said, check out these really cool plastic rivets. And I was like, yeah. these are as cool as you get for rivets. And so um, I stopped them and um, we have them in the store. So there's two lengths. They look all similar. So you're like, there's all these photos. There's the short yeah. and long one. I think I'll show them on the overhead to really show yep. the difference between the two. I mean, yeah. So hold on. Let me get my rivets. Meanwhile, here they can look at what the rivets look like on cardboard. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, sorry. That's interesting. That's interesting. All right, so um, I'll just show you. So basically we had in the store these small uh, plastic rivets, and these are chunky. So these are great for thick card. Look, you got like big chunky cardboard. And you can have like maybe even four pieces. There's a little bit of room left uh, for another piece if you want. Um, these are the long ones, so they're they're nice and big. Um, they're easy to put together. You just poke a hole with a pencil, and these rivets go in. So these are there's two kinds. There's the short kind and the long kind. So this is the long kind, and this is the short kind. But they're they're actually like otherwise the exact same thing. Just they're I mean you can even cut the long ones down if you want. Um, and then you get two matching ones. You get two matching ones. And they're symmetric. So they have, if you can kind of see, there's these two little prongs, these two prongs, and they fit into each other. So you fit the prong in like this. And then, you know, you don't have to squeeze all the way. So if you have something really thick, you can stop here. Or you can keep going until you've gone all the way to the end. And that's the um, thinnest of the material you can do. So this one is, you know, about like a half an inch or so. And then, uh, I think this one's like 12 millimeter, and this one's, these are the short ones, so you can see they're much shorter pronged. Same idea though, you push them together, this is as long as you can get, and then, you know, there's little uh, clicks, and you can keep clicking it until you get to the bottom. And so, uh, you know, two different ranges, but um, super solid. I mean, like, they don't really come apart after you're done, but they're inexpensive enough. Yep. And yeah, they work great for any kind of large cardboard crafting. So we've got smaller rivets, and now we've got these bigger rivets. The smaller ones are good for like a thin cardboard and like paperboard, and these are good for like you got refrigerator boxes, uh, shipping de delivery boxes with lots of different pieces. Um, this is what you want to use, and they okay. look good too. Look nice rivets. Next up. Next up. Battery holder. Battery holder. This is a nice battery holder. So the deal with this battery holder is. Um, You'll notice not only does it full, hold four AA batteries, okay, so you're you're rocking. You got some light, but you, know, you got the um, nickel metal hydrides, about five volts. You got alkalines, you got six volts. But on the ends, you'll see not just wires, but you'll see these little premium headers. So you can plug these directly into a breadboard or a development board with female headers. So it's a couple cents more, but we covered that cost and we got these made so that you can just plug them right in. Um, if you've ever struggled to plug in batteries into a breadboard, you know how annoying it is? Well, Don't this solves your problem. I mean, I can show it, but it's kind of the same as these images. Okay, I think the images moving. are pretty clear. All right, next up. Okay, and then Canary. That's why this is the code tonight. This is the Canary. So Canary Yellow is the handle. Canary is the name. This is a beautiful uh, Japanese-made uh, cardboard cutters. I mean, it's, it's a knife specifically for cutting cardboard, and it works really well at it. So I will show a demo of it. Yes. Um, um, we've had to make so many cardboard robot projects and cardboard projects that we wanted to get these in the store. It took a while, but these are fantastic. Okay, and they're, this, what's really nice is that they've got this non-stick handle, so it's like a Teflon-y handle. So even if you've got like stickers or tape on it, it'll cut yeah. right through. Don't worry about it. It's not going to get like, you know, you, sometimes you cut with scissors. And then you if cut you use tape an with it. And knife, then you're going to just get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Don't and use scissors, an exacto knife. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Um, so this, it's just like a saw. Yeah, and you can do and you can curves and more and like it's just really easy. Yeah. And it's less dangerous. See, so even even now, I can. Yeah. I'm clumsy, and I manage not to hurt myself. Um, but you can cut you know, unusual shapes, and they they look quite nice because they're nicely sawn. Um, you're not going to poke yourself like with an X-Acto. Um, all that happens is you end up uh, cutting your fingers. 
Um, with this, it's not sharp. This is made just for this. Yeah, so, I mean, like, don't eat it. Um, and don't poke in your eye, but uh, you, you can't easily hurt yourself. And it's great for cardboard. It just works really well. Um, so if you're doing a lot of cardboard crafting or if you have a school or a maker space, you might want to pick one of these up. It's just like, it's a specialized tool, but once you use this, you don't really want to use anything else. You will not go back. You will not Write go back. Write your name on it because someone will take it. I know, okay. but it's the handle for writing your name on it. Okay, next up. Okay. Here's a thing. It's a thing. It's the Things Network. Yeah. We have a Things Network router. It's a TTN. This is a really well-made, beautifully engineered LoRaWAN router. It uh, has an SX13-1 uh, chipset, so it can do like eight simultaneous channel scans. It can support like hundreds of nodes. This is like a really nice router. Um, we actually uh, uh, chatted with both the city and the Things Network, and New York City is going to be putting up a bunch of these routers in various buildings around Manhattan. So if you have a LoRaWAN project, you can connect to um, you know, free routers and yep. get your data onto the internet. So LoRaWAN is uh, this low power radio system. It's free, unlike Sigfox. You don't have to pay um, subscription fees or usage fees, but you'll need a router because the LoRaWAN, which um, you know, we have our Feather um, M0 Expresses. They have, a, I have an all show. It has a, a LoRa chipset on it. Um, but it doesn't connect to the internet directly. It's not Wi-Fi or cellular. But it's really low cost and it's really low power. So the trade-off is you'll need to have this router. And the router is what takes the LoRa packet data that's like 900 megahertz and can go a couple kilometers. And then this connects to Wi-Fi or Ethernet and then will transmit your data to the Things network. Now you're probably like, oh man, I'm gonna have to run all this software and I have to like do this configuration and I'm sure it's like I gotta like do Linux kernel stuff. Well, you're in luck. With the Things network, you don't have to. Uh, and this is why it's great to support them. They've got uh, this full backend that makes it really, really easy for you to deploy your router. Like this router's up, it's called Adafruit. Yeah. Uh, it's got a location. And the software is excellent. Here's some screenshots. Yeah, um, this is us testing. We set it up with a feather. We were going in you know, 15 minutes uh, using the uh, Laura Wen example we found from MCCI. Um, so you can see data, there's timestamps. So you don't have to write the software. This is all done for you. I'll show you the gateway traffic, who's connected. You can have authorization, so you don't have to, have it, you know, it's, it's unencrypted because LoRa is unencrypted. Um, but you can, um, you know, you, you can do private obfuscation if you want of your yeah, data. This is neat. This is um, temperature. It, yeah, and you can, can do this cool metadata thing with it. Yeah, it has metadata, but you can, and I'll tell you like the frequency, and the rate, all this stuff it'll store for you. Uh, tell you the signal strength, but it can also decode the data. So you see in the middle there, there's an Arduino um, uh, serial monitor, and you can see this. The, our, the Feather M0 is sending LoRa data, and you can see it being received boop, boop, on the boop, website. Boop, boop, so boop, it's boop. like all all that backend stuff is taken care of for you, and then you can hook that data into other like web hooks or like MQTT, whatever you want. Yeah. You can get that data. So. Um, the Things Network is a free service, but you know it, it does take time and effort and money to support it. So when you pick up one of these routers, not only are you getting an excellent FCC certified product that works quite well, um, but you're also supporting um, their uh, endeavor to create this uh, LoRa WAN um, sensor network that basically in every city, they started in the Netherlands, but in America they would like to get more city coverage as well. I thought I would show the innards of this things network yeah. as well. What's inside? Yeah. This stuff. This is why it's where. So you can remove the cover and it's very hackable. It's open source. Um, inside here, there's a PIC32 processor. It's the main processor. This is the radio. Uh, and this is the SX1301. And this is the radio. It's kind of warm because it's been running for a while. Um, it's got FCC ID on it. Uh, it's got the Ethernet jack if you want to do Ethernet. Uh, this is the LoRa antenna. It also has Wi-Fi somewhere here. I think this is the Wi-Fi module, and then this is maybe Bluetooth. Um, it's a lot of microchip stuff. Microchip does a lot of uh, LoRa products. Um, you can add GPS if you want. So it doesn't come with a GPS, but you know it's it's pluggable right in here. Um, this is a programming header if you want to program the chip. It's all open source, of course. Um, a B header, so if you have an XB or XB compatible device and you want to plug it in, uh, you can plug it in right there. So you can see this is like hackable, hackable. SD card slot, I don't know what that's for, but I'm sure it's something cool. Um, 
and uh, the Big Things logo over there. And then, yeah, and it's got these cool um, rubber uh, attachy things so you can stick it onto your window. So we're going to stick it on the window here so people can use this as well. And then, yeah, you can configure a router to either be like open for everybody or you need to have a key, you know, all, all that stuff that you expect. And uh, deploying, it's really easy because they want to make it um, super fast for people to uh, add on. Uh, but check out the Things Network. They have uh, tons of guides and tutorials on all of this stuff to get going with Laura. I mean, uh, Sigfox is great, but you do have to pay for it. And what's nice about Laura is once you've picked up the hardware, you don't have to pay subscription fees after that. So it's not, it's not an open patent-free protocol, unfortunately, but you don't have to have subscription fees to use it. So it's, it's, this is a, a great reason why um, setting up a free router uh, for your network or neighborhood and your community is it's something you should do. Okay. Okay, put um, that back on. I don't know if you saw in the news, there is a number one best-selling book sold out in all bookstores. I heard it's, about it. It's, it's, it's an in-depth look it's an at in uh, <laughs> yeah. um, what's going inside uh, the circuit playground. And I'm actually serious. This is, uh, congratulations, Mike Barala, um, one of the Adafruit team members. Um, new releases in electrical and electronic circuits. It's number one on Amazon Hot New Releases. Hot. You can see it here. Hot. That's right. Hot. And number it's one. coming soon and, in the Adafruit shop. And uh, we have it in the Adafruit shop very shortly, so sign up for it. Congratulations, Mike. He's worked on this for a really long time. It is Epic. the best book for using Circuit Playground Express, using MakeCode, using Circuit Python, and using Arduino. This is out. It is here. Mike will be at Maker Fair, and, and he'll be signing these. Yes, he'll be at Maker Fair in New York. But this book is great because it is a triple duty book. It talks about Make Code, it talks about Circuit Python, talks about Arduino. You you learn how to use a Circuit Playground Express in many different ways. Um, this is not even Mike's first book. He's written uh, the Great Trinket book. No. He's written his first dozens radio. and do yeah, he's done this. He's written dozens and dozens of guides. Um, but the book has like, beautiful color images and it's it's compact. No anonymous sources in this book. None. 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 The fire and fury All of on the record. LEDs. Okay. Um, and then, of course, so hopefully there'll be a digital edition as well. And so if you don't want to buy a physical book, uh, uh, you can uh, go to the O'Reilly website and buy a uh, digital edition. Yeah, that'll all be out soon. So we have uh, yeah. coming soon page up. And anyone who's with some people from the Adafruit community has helped review it, and they're all like, this is the best. Yep. Okay. All right, and with that, Lady Ada is new products. Yay! Mm -hmm.